Um, reports also uh, Brexit talks heading for a showdown. Is the other headline. The paper says there have been hopes a deal was close, but the British delegation was taken aback after the EU made a series of destabilising last-minute demands. Uh, yeah, and that um, the image is actually snow. Oh, that's my mistake. I, I thought that was Scotland. It's actually a uh, viaduct in North Yorkshire. So a, a lot of those areas in the north of England, Scotland as well, just getting that smattering of snow. Yeah. Uh, the I newspaper says the world's first doses of the coronavirus vaccine will be distributed to 53 hubs this weekend, with hospitals ready to roll out jabs from Tuesday. Now, the paper is adding that MI5 has advised ministers to keep freezer locations which are required to store the jab a secret in order to prevent sabotage. And I can tell you that we are going to be talking a lot about this. We're going to be talking to Chris Hobson, who's the CEO of NHS Providers, about ten past days. We'll get more details on that. The BBC website has more on the decision from Warner Brothers to make all releases available to stream at the same time as their cinema release. The move enabled film fans to watch forthcoming sci-fi epic Dune and the Matrix sequel on HBO Max. And The Sun is reporting on Girls Aloud singer Sarah Harding. And Sarah Harding has thanked fans for the love and support she's received since revealing she has breast cancer. That was in August. She revealed she's been writing her life story whilst re receiving chemotherapy. So we did a little bit of Fashion Friday yesterday, didn't we? Oh, yes. The baguette and the... Um, the baguette ba the handbag. The baguette handbag yeah. and the croissant handbag. Um, so I thought um, I'd move from fashion and keep the food theme going today because there's a new... Um, uh, trend of cooking omelettes, and I thought if anyone knows how to cook an omelette, it's you. Take us through the steps. Well, I, first of all, I thought I'd remind our viewers of um, your culinary um, expertise. Scramble this out. is as part of the Children in Need Challenge, wasn't it? And you were going to Surely cook as many omelettes as you could in um, 58 seconds. What, what is your technique there, Charlie? What were you thinking when you were creating... Can I just make the point that most people don't have to cook their omelettes on a tiny stove like that, and they don't, they're not bothered by can a bear I, can we talk, just hanging around in the background. Can we That's talk about, two things that are quite distracting. Well, can we talk about your stirring technique? We got a little bit of that. You had a wooden spoon there, yeah? And you decided to stir when you were making the omelette. That's what you do. Is that how you make an omelette? It was done in a hurry. It was done no, in a hurry, and no, I think under the reason... circumstances, under the pressure, it was the cameras, there was cameras on me as well. On top of everything else, there was cameras, that. there was a bear. You're not used to cameras. Is what have you got? Tell you... us about the well, new thing. I'm asking you if you think you should stir when you make an omelette. And that, on that occasion, I did. I don't know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. How about that? So, eggs, right? Um, there's a trend on social media for the tornado omelette. And I think you had something there, Charlie, when you did that challenge. What's a tornado omelette? A tornado omelette is made, right, with chopsticks. So... It, there's been a craze for these that began in the United States. Apparently, it's spread to here in, in the UK. It's created by using chopsticks. And what you do is you twirl whisked eggs in a hot pan. And as it cooks, the omelette spirals into the form of a tornado or a flower. And this egg um, dish is part of a traditional Korean dish um, where it's placed over a mound of rice and surrounded with curry. Gosh, that sounds, sounds nice. so good. That's Korean. Um, and, but videos were posted on, you know, basically social media platforms. So if you want to know, this is in... I think this is in The Telegraph. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, this is how it is. And egg sales have gone up by more than a fifth in a year because people are obviously cooking at home. In so, defence of my technique in, uh, in the clip you saw, heard earlier on, all, all I would say is that the other thing I remember now when I'm thinking about it was that such was the cooking utensils I had at the time. As soon as I put the eggs in the pan, they were burning. So the reason I was moving them around was literally to stop the whole thing just burning as it, as it fell into the pan. Another story the for you is, this though, morning... The thing is, though, you say that. If the pan was that hot, why were your eggs not cooked? Another story for you this morning. Um, we have Dawn French on later on this morning. Really talking about a number of things, a couple of TV She's projects. Busy. One of which is uh, Beatrix Potter, a film about Beatrix Potter, in which she plays Beatrix Potter. It's charming. Um, this, this story here is about Kate, Kate Winslet talking about method acting. She, she's got, in her new role, isolated uh, place, and she went and lived in a, a tiny little hut by the sea, and all the production team said, just go to the hotel like everyone else, and yeah. she was like, oh, I'm trying to get in the mood and for the whole thing. Last. And uh, just made me think, Je uh, Jessica Hines is in the Beatrix Potter thing, who has who plays a Norwegian lady. Yeah. She has a Norwegian accent. Yeah. And Kate Winslet was saying that when she did a German role, she read to her children in the German accent to try and keep the whole thing going the whole time. And I think Norwegian accents are very hard to nail, I would think, I think as so. an actor. They're quite hard to do almost like a spoof. 
Yes, it but could maybe sound, not yeah. to sound genuine. Airbnb has warned it could take legal action against anyone throwing a New Year's Eve party at one of their properties. People won't be allowed to book entire homes for just that one night unless they've got a previous history of positive reviews. In August, police broke up a house party said to have been held at an Airbnb in North London following complaints from neighbours. A nurse who volunteered to work in London's Nightingale Hospital during the peak of the pandemic has been recognised with a Rising Star Award from the Royal College of Nursing. Dorcas Boma had never worked before in intensive care. She was one of 24 nurses to be honoured. She explained why, despite the risks, she wanted to do it. A lot of the percentage of the patients were all from a BAME background and I thought, wow. Is this, is, this, is this going to be me? Because that could be my dad, that could be my mum. And I thought I didn't want to do it. And someone said, take a break. And walking out and just reflecting and just thinking, I want to be here, that's why I'm here. One of Britain's greatest art collections from Buckingham Palace goes on public show today. The old masters usually hang in the picture gallery, but they've been moved to the more modern exhibition space at the Queen's Gallery while a major refurbishment takes place. Well, these are some of the most important paintings in, in the history of European art. The great names are there, Titian, Rembrandt, Vermeer, uh, but they also they cohere quite well. We're, we're, we're able to show a very strong group of Italian painting from the um, 16th century through to the early 18th century.